What is up, guys and gals? Welcome back to the Nerdcastle for the next episode of Battle Brothers. My name is Splattercat, happy to have you here today as we hang out for a little bit and actually try to recover from a fight that had kicked our patooties. What a patootie is, I don't know, but we're licking our wounds right now. It's not the best medical care, but it's medieval times, so licking our wounds is the best that we've got at the moment. Uh, in today's episode, we're going to try and bounce back. We've hired a few new guys, and we've got some level ups, and so at least our core fighters all appear to have come out on top. I can't explain to you how they did it, why they did it, but they managed to survive. And so, you know what? I'm going to start pumping up some stats and trying to put them in a better position so that as we go forward, we'll start to develop a nice core team of guys who are tougher than the others. I'm going to put all the really, really good fighters first in the line. So there it is. We do have a number of wounded men. We could put them into reserve, but forget that. They don't get time off. Ain't nobody signed up for that right there. We've got Baron Gar ready to go with a perk over here. He took dodge last time. I think the best thing that he could probably take for himself is he using a shield. Let's go a shield expert then. It lowers the damage our shield takes and also makes it so that he gets a bonus when he's guarding with a shield. And since just about everybody's running a shield right now, that's probably the best way that we can manage our affairs. I'm going to put dodge on you, sir, because it's great. So there it is. That'll give him a nice little bonus, whatever his initiative. It's 49, so 15% of 49. I'm bad at math, but it'll add a little bit to his melee. I'm sure I'm doing that ability wrong. I'm not totally positive what that ability in its entirety entails, but I'm sure it'll be all right. I need you to have better morale. Oh my god, your morale is just absolutely miserable. Perfect. So let's go through, and we actually need to retool the group, and we'll start moving some of the gear around and getting people into better shape. So for Hamhawk... I am going to have you right there with the chainmail. Put that stuff on. You will now be a chainmailed warrior, and he's in pretty good shape from it, in all fairness. he's His encumbrance is good. Uh, we got to work on his fatigue a little bit, though, if he's going to be wearing heavy armor. That's becoming very, very apparent. So we got 55 armor right there. Let's start swapping in some of these 55 armor suits. He's got chainmail. You, sir, will have cheap armor for right now. You will also have cheap armor because there's just not enough to go around. And then you will also, actually, you lucked out and got the rugged Circo. So look at you over here getting the good upgrades. We definitely probably want to minimize those critical hits to our characters as we go forward. I'm going to give you that right there. So you've got yourself a lovely little morning star. That should be really, really cool. On this side, shields up. We're going to give you a hand axe or a hatchet. No, let's give you a hand axe. That seems pretty good. Part of this game, I mean, the fun part of this game for me anyways, is being able to equip people with lots and lots of stuff and making them kind of badass. We may want to go for another second two-handed warrior. We do have a falchion right here, and I'm thinking if I got anybody with a normal sword, I may swap them into the falchion before too long. It's a pretty good weapon. does 70% against armor. A boar spear. Is that like a better version of the spear? Because these guys have, what's that, 25 to 35? Yeah, it looks like we've got better options now. So one of you guys, take the boar spear. We'll get that all fixed up. Does that attack two range? Does that attack one range? It attacks one range. All right. I can live with that. Everybody else got a hat? Yeah, you cover your bald head real fast because I sense that being a point of weakness in your overall strategy. Looks good. We should have enough stuff to sell to make a little bit of money as we go forward, and that should help us bounce back a little bit better. We do have a lot of spears, though. I mean, it's really tempting in this game just to go spears up on, like, everybody. Because spears are really, really good in this game. One thing I like about this game is they manage to be somewhat factually accurate in that, like, if you've got a guy who's not the best fighter, give him a spear and just watch him do his work and just have him overwatch, basically, the enemy to death. And it tends to work out pretty well. Making spear lines in this game is a really, really good strategy. But we have a lot of wounds. We have a lot of people right now that are not feeling super great. So the best thing that we could probably do is stay out of trouble into the near future. Just don't get into any fights. We are currently on our way down to Grubenfast. And so hopefully we'll be able to make that. Or no, we're on our way. We're in Fuxburg right now. And we're headed down to Weedfield or something. I don't know. They've got the dankest weed. It's what they do. Weed. It's what we do. Uh, we do have some footprints around here, so we're going to want to be careful about those. It looks like we've got some wild animals wandering around. I almost lost focus right there and did something stupid. I was going to go chase them down, but ah, why worry about it? That's on lock. Can't really do much with it for right now. Let me go to the armor and see what I can get for some of this gear, because we got to get ourselves paid. So with the woodcutter's axe, we'll get rid of the pikes. We'll get rid of all of the pickaxes, because I don't see those being ooh 200% effective against armor. 
Not bad. Not bad at all. But still, I'm carrying around too much loot right now. we got to get some cash together for the future. Otherwise, we're going to have a rough time going forward. I will hold on to the leather halberks. But everything else can go. The farmer's hats can go. The bucklers can go. I don't think it weighs you down or anything if you travel with this stuff on you. And aside from that, I'm pretty happy with our equipment at the moment. We ended up with a lot of really, really good loot from that last fight. And I think it is going to benefit us. Let's jump into this menu real quick right here. And actually, I've got a second boar spear that I didn't even realize about. So if we've got a second boar spear, go ahead and give that to one of our better fighters. Like, oh, he's already got a boar spear. Uh, do you have a boar spear? You do not have a boar spear. Give that to Berengar so that he deals a little bit more damage. Perfect. And that pretty much leaves us right where I want to be. Uh, inside this little community right here, I would say that my best option is just to look for more soldiers. People that can fill in and kind of get our weak spots all nice and rounded out. We don't have the gear for them right now, but... What are you, a gambler? They tend to have really, really high resolve. What are you, a blacksmith, an apprentice, knowledge and learn faster than others. Mainolf, he's a farmer. He's also got a rock and beard, so I'm going to go with Mainolf for right now. We could achieve our destiny at the moment. He's a miller. Yeah, let's do that. I don't know what happens when you hit your ambition, but we just technically, like, hit it, so that's a full company right there. We're back up at full strength. Unfortunately, we don't really have the equipment to go around on a lot of these guys. I will probably just set you up with that right there. You've already got yourself a linen tunic. And so we're just going to try and keep you out of the way until some gear drops. I've got money right now. It's just that I'm trying to save up a nice little pool of cash so that I can deal with any of the other little things that come up like needing tools and stuff like that. You will spend money in this game on... Oh yeah, you can get war dogs. I forgot about that. They added that right about the time I stopped playing the game. They added in war dogs and I'm a big, big, big fan of war dogs. I think they're really, really awesome. Wow, that wine is expensive. Food's good. Tools are kind of bad, but actually tools are a little bit cheaper here, I think. Ammunition's still solid, so let's buy a stack of tools very quickly. If there's any armor in here that we can get for dirt nasty cheap, I will take that. Although it doesn't look to me like that's going to be a real option. That right there would be all right since we can repair it ourselves. So I will take it. We'll jump up into our menu right here, and for this guy, I just need him to have some kind of coverage. If he's got any kind of coverage, it makes him survive a little bit longer in combat. So there it is. We got them all nice and equipped up, and it's down to Weedafield for some more adventure. Not going to stop if I can help it in between any locations. Having finally gathered the coin and the equipment, you managed to assemble a full complement of 12 able fighters. When next you walk down Grubenfest Main Street, the men break into a full-throated marching song. A few of the townsfolk mutter under their breath about dirty mercenaries taking over the town, but others walk alongside and shout the words with you. Stand tall, brothers. People can see this is a real mercenary company now, and not a handful of wandering vagabonds, Berengar declares. We trade in strength, and now that our members have gone up, so will our price. It appears he has the right of it. You notice one particularly fat nobleman sizing up the company as if he has a task on his mind. The heavy hand of the game are now a force to be reckoned with. Once the men have settled into a celebratory drink, perhaps you can take another stroll through town to see if any more lucrative contracts may be available. And so we've gained renown, everybody's in good spirits, and Hamhawk, who was actually pretty bummed out about that last fight, lost a lot of friends on that one, is now content. And so that's all that it takes. That is all that it takes so odd. I've got like this frame lag thing going on right now, and if I zoom out and then I zoom back in, it gets fixed. It's such a strange thing. I don't know. It's playing perfectly fine up until like a minute ago, and now it's just being weird. Let's turn this thing in at Weedafield and see what we got going on. After some looking, you find the guy, and then we get the sellsword pay, and we get 330 crowns. Feel free to pause and go through that if you want. I don't want to spend too much time going through. we got a two-skull mercenary contract right there couple people that want to get hired so can I still add people to my reserves or like how does that work because if I could develop a nice little reserve I think these are reservists right here and if I could get myself some reservists who can step in and we can swap gear out as we go forward I think that'd be pretty rad too I'm also thinking about getting some javelins for the guys that have a little bit more range skill than others so some of our guys actually have okay range skill for melee fighters well 40 ish would be the ones that I would put that on but Looking pretty good right now. Pretty happy with our company. I'll be really, really fair. I'm pretty happy with it. Now that we've ended up getting ourselves paid, we really kind of got to decide what we want to do with this whole thing and where we want to go from here. 
I'm thinking we just keep stacking that cash and increasing our value. I mean, our little group is gaining... I think we got this thing called... I don't know. It says we've got Renown. I don't know where we check that at, but I assume we check it somewhere. And so I'm not going to worry about it for just this second, but... Eh. I'm sure it'll be okay. Is that going bad soon? Okay, so our food's going to spoil really, really shortly. What's up with this mission right here? So you find Hilmar the Councilman talking to a monk. Uh, he says, Sellsword, it's good to see you. A mercenary, huh? Surely you're a man of faith. No, we of Whittafield have lost the blood vial of the Holy Mother, the relic of, of a great import to us, for it can speak to the old gods and have our prayers answered. It has been stolen away in some manner or another to the excavated heap of bones. Go there and retrieve it. You glance at Hilmar the Councilman who nods. Yep, what he said. Okay, he'll pay us 540. Ah, uh, nope. He doesn't understand how it works. All right, well, we'll take the contract for 540. I don't know what we're shooting for right here, but I'm sure it'll be okay. We are looking for... It is west of Weedafield. It's good that they added that to there, because last time I played the game, sometimes it wouldn't write down the directional stuff. So basically, you would get the quest, and if you were just trying to flick through it real fast, you would not get the info on where the quest actually was. And so you'd be like, no! And then you wouldn't be able to find the place. So it says to the west of... Oh, never mind. They actually put it out there for us. Okay, well, we'll travel through the forest first. Hopefully everybody has time to get healed up before we get down there. We got one more day's time before the majority of the team is actually going to be in okay shape. He's got a busted leg. What does that do? Increase the AP value of, like, his movement, probably? Okay. Well, we don't move much anyways. We're all about shield lines, and so the strategy's been working for us, and so the strategy's going to continue getting that call back. Down, doobie doo down, down. Through a forest, down, doobie doo down, down. It's a very popular... Very, very popular mercenary song, in case you were wondering. I'm actually going to clear around this a little bit and look for tracks or anything else that might be interesting over here. Because we have a lot of guys that still need to heal, and I'm not trying to get anybody one-shotted today. So it should be day 11 very, very shortly. There we go. The day just rolled over. How healed are we right now? How bad is this looking? He's at full health. He's got a pierced leg muscle. Everybody looks mostly healthy, though, so we'll, we'll try to be careful about the people who are slightly nicked up at the moment, but I bet it'll be all right. Let's get down in here and see what we can make happen. The blood vial of the Holy Mother is plain as day to see, but there's something else in the room that catches your attention. Sitting beside an enormous statue is a very unique-looking ancient sword. Of course, it begs the question, what in all the hells is it doing out here? While you think it's plain as day, you should go and grab it. Something tells you that might not be the wisest of decisions. Maybe the heavy hand of the game should stick to what it was tasked to do. Ah, take the sword. As you grab the blood vial of the Holy Mother, you glance at the ancient sword and figure, eh, why not? We're not paladins, man. We're bad guys. We're mercenaries. At best, we're like middle-of-the-road ethical people. Sure, we'll take the sword. You climb up to the statue and stare into the face of the man it has taken its image from. Whoever it was, they had chiseled cheekbones and a jaw to hang a coat on. Looking past his features, you grab the ancient sword and hold it out, waiting for something to happen. Nothing does, and Gunner laughs. You gonna tell the statue welcome or not? You pat the statue on the head and climb down. The company should head back to Hilmar the Councilman now. Okay, that was it. Something's gonna chase us, isn't it? Something's gonna be like, my sword. Give it back, my sword. I bet you that's what's gonna happen. It's a little rusty and beat up. Here, let's put another sword alongside it so I can compare easier. 38 to 43. Okay, so it's better than a short sword. It's a little bit better than a falchion on the lower end. It's worth 850, though. A straight blade of ancient origin. The grip is covered with strange ornamentations. Is the fatigue better on it? It's effective against armor. I mean, may as well, right? I, I don't know if it's going to help that much, but hey. Give somebody an ancient sword. Sure. God, we're going to get chased by ghosts or something all the way back to town. I know it. Something's going to be very, very upset that we took that sword, or it's going to be cursed. You feel good today, ready to lead the heavy hand of the game through any challenge to come. You gather the men around, kicking Helfrick the Miller to his feet and telling Halstein to finish scraping away the hairs on his neck later. When the muttering subsides, you address them, so we got to do a new ambition now. What new ambition do we want? Well, we need a battle standard. Or... We can pay a visit to every settlement far and wide. 2,000 crowns. Well, let's go ahead and say that we're going to visit everywhere. How about that? 
So every town and fortification in the world. There's still some settlements left that we need to visit. And so there's Thal, Alderberg. There's lots of things. There's places. So let's go down to Thal, actually. After we get back to uh, Widefield, we'll go down to Tentlingen. We'll go down to Thal, and we'll just hit all of it. I mean, seems like a cool ambition. We'll be world travelers. That mission was way too easy, though. Something's up. I'm getting paid like 600 gold for nothing right now. Maybe we just got lucky when we did that, but I'm not sure. Something seems off. You find Hilmar the councilman sitting in the town square, his arms up to the skies, his eyes closed, and his mouth murmuring prayers. The town folks are all around him, kneeling and doing the same. You pick up a rock and hurl it at a weather vane. The clank and rustic spin draws everyone's attention. You hold the relic up so all can see. Hilmar the councilman jumps to his feet and takes the blood vial of the Holy Mother. The people roar with delight, speaking of good things to come. Your payment is handed to you, which truly is what you would consider a good thing. All right. So we just got paid, and they're in high spirits. The people are eager to do business with you. Does that mean I can get stuff for cheaper? They don't really have anything here that I truly want, but... There's cloth rolls. I can buy them for 127 It says they're worth 140 so I say take a chance on that, and we'll... Drop it off wherever it ends up being pertinent. I'm going to pay for medical supplies so that people can get their heels on. Because we do have a lot of wounded people at the moment. Extra band-aids and whatnot. Probably not going to be something I spend money on. But from there, I'm happy. I'm really, really happy. We've got ourselves in a solid position right now. I'll sell that off. That's worth 100 but we're never able to sell it. So you know what? I'm just going to assume that maybe it's mismarked or something. Let's go down to Tent Lingen. Have I been there? I don't know if I've been down to Tent Lingen, but I'm not going to cancel my ambitions. The world's not going to break me like that. The world thinks it knows me, but it don't know me like that. So down to Tent Lingen. We'll find ourselves some work and keep the coffers full, yeah? So it's a modest trading port. There is a contract here. They want us to go. Let's see here. Man of Faith. We've lost the Prophet's pamphlets, so these guys want relics too. I expect to be paid more. We're all friends here, aren't we? Let me see. 340. Alright, I accept the offer. At the excavated heap of bones. Wasn't that the place we were just at? Yeah, that's the place we were just at. So it looks like we're doing the same job twice. If nothing else, the last one went easy enough without any incident or problem. So hey, let's get after it. That big spinning coin over the top of it makes me feel pretty good. Although this time it looks like it's got a garrison. So let's see what's going on here with two fields. Hopefully it's just as easy as the last time we did this. I can't imagine that's going to be the case. My guess is they sent us here twice with the intent of really screwing us on the second time, would be my guess. Yeah, you don't step into the ruins so much as Clamber, hobbling over stoneworks like a bat, trying to walk upright. Getting to the bottom of the descent, you find what looks like hundreds of clay pots, old chariots, and more mulch than wood, and metal water basins filled with rusted shields and spears. Berengar takes a torch and throws its glow towards the walls. Great murals run along the length of them, great artworks depicting battles you've never heard of. Each step you take seems to unveil another ancient victory until finally you come to a giant painted map. There you see a continent overrun with the rule of an empire, gilded its belly, blackened its borders. Berengar walks over, the prophet's pamphlets in hand. You nod and tell him it's time to go. When you turn around, there's a man standing there with a spear in one hand and a shield in the other. Another figure joins him in another, their steps hitting the stone floor with metal malice. You yell at the mercenary to run, and both of you abandon the ruins in a hurry. The staccato clap of death march on your heels. Outside, you wheel around in order to get the men ready for a fight. Before the first sellsword can so much as draw his blade, a stream of armored soldiers emerge from the ruins, stack formation, and level their spears at you. Their lieutenant points a decayed finger and speaks with a voice so graveled, the words weigh deep in your chest. The Empire rises. The false king must die. Okay. Let's see how this goes. Uh, it doesn't look too bad, but we don't know how tough these are, I suppose. Just fire arrows at whoever. It doesn't really matter. There you go. Strip his armor off. Let's wait for him. We're not really going to be doing a whole lot here. I'll try to shift him back, actually, once it's his turn. Yeah, you shift back to, like, right there, so you're hiding behind the line. They've got okay movement. Not like super solid movement, but I don't know exactly how we want to play this. We'll probably run this as a spear line would be my first thought. We'll draw the archers back, and then we'll put spearmen in here, and we'll have them run it basically as just like a wall of death. He's got a sword, so that's not going to work. I do wish there was an option to like set up your formation before combat. 
Uh, everybody shields up. You step to there. Spear wall. Shields up. Get ready for the hit. Just in case. I don't know where I want these guys at. You go that way, I guess. Spears out. I don't want to use too much fatigue, so I'm not going to go... I'm not going to go full on like shields up, spears out, because that'll basically fill their entire fatigue bars if I do that. That's one of the big nerfs from the last time I played the game, is that you used to be able to just spear wall ad nauseum. And so, my guess is they nerfed it a little bit by making it very fatiguing in order to do that. Uh, you fire an arrow at somebody, doesn't matter, and then step backwards. You do similarly. You stay behind the lines, that's fine. They're going to come in, and the spear strike is going to miss, and already on the first turn, he's going to lose half of his armor. There we go, push him back. Very nice, perfect. That's exactly what I wanted to see. Uh, pretty good chance right there we're going to be able to get a lot of stuff done. With the shield moves and whatnot, that should keep them away from us, and that's precisely the strategy we're going to play this whole time is we just want them on these shields, boys. Like, we don't want to... We don't want to push our luck. Did he not get one right there? I was hoping he would get a spear strike. Unfortunately, they've made it to the lines on this bottom end, and I don't like that at all. The gap closing is real right now, but that one's down, so our bill hook back behind the lines has managed to make good on his job. I'm going to circle the archers around that way. You... Help out over here, I guess. And shields up. Keep your shields up. There you go. Get a little bit of damage off on him. As far as Jizbird is concerned, I'm going to have him do the same thing, but over this direction. And we're going to fire, see if we can fire through anyways. I don't know if it'll work, but we're going to try. A little bit of damage out right there. We're going to continue the spear wall strategy. Everywhere that it's holding, basically, we're going to keep the strategy. And everywhere where it's failing, we're just going to go all in and fight. Ah, he's managed to push in. Okay. Stay on the spear wall, I guess, right there. Because I think he's probably going to try and move forward. And our options are pretty slim now that the battle's joined. There you go. Very nice. Keep working on him. Good. Okay, so now we can fold one side on the south right there. Uh, shield. Ah, you know what? Just go all in on him. I would say shield's up, but I don't know. Oof. Perfect. You go over there. That leaves us with you. Just keep firing. Help out right there. Oh, good. They're folding. Fantastic. That's the problem with fighting enemies that you don't really know how strong they are. Is that it can be very, very difficult to tell. Ooh. Nasty little strike right there that he took. Sooner or later, the shields are going to go and they're going to break, so we just got to stay on them for a little bit. Nice. Our shields are holding up well, too, though. Sometimes they just break through your shields, like, on the first turn, and it's like, what can you do about it? Keep that damage going out. And actually, yeah, you step forward. See if we can't finish him off. Somebody's panting now. But I suppose that's better than shorting. Don't ever short. If you short, it's no bueno. I'm going to drag him up this way, although I think my archer's usefulness is basically outlived at this point. Ah, nice big hit right there. Ah, another death. Fantastic. Morale is looking solid, but we're not out of the woods yet. This is a game of one-shotting. It really sincerely is, and so we need to be careful about the way that we orchestrate our business here because getting one-shotted happens all the time in this game. So until the battle is completely and totally over, you can never trust that you're going to walk away. And their shields are actually in pretty decent shape. We're having a lot of trouble getting through those. So now you see the problem of an enemy that deploys the exact same strategy that we do. An enemy that's just like, yeah, I'm just going to shield wall the whole time. And then you just got to sit there whittling at each other, hoping that you get through. Luckily, the AI seems to prioritize safety, and I like to play like a berserker, and so I'm getting more attacks than he is, 
which is absolutely fantastic. I can attack from there if I had a little bit more. Any deaths on this turn? No. You got the block up. Very, very nice. Keep that shield up. Work that plate, son. Work that plate. Ain't nobody else going to be able to do anything for right now, so we'll just stand around. Try to fish out an archery kill, but no such luck there. That was a nasty fight that could have gone very, very differently, methinks. We have Ancient Auxiliary Shields. They don't look that useful to me, although an Ancient Household Helmet looks good. Sword sucks. We got some tools, and we got a bunch of gold, so that's good. That helmet's pretty legit, though. It lowers your vision range, however, which is kind of weird. Dude, there's a cat fur inside my mouse right now, and it's making things weird. You ever get a cat fur inside your mouth? Or inside your mouse? That shit's hell of annoying, and your mouth is gross, too. You've gotten the Prophet's pamphlets, but at the cost of running into a sort of evil you've never seen before. Armored men ostensibly dead, yet operating in tight formations. Cottonwood holds up the Prophet's pamphlets and what to do next. You inform the men that it's time to return to Henrik the Burgomeister. Yep, burn the place on down, and let's head back. My name is Splattercat. This is Battle Brothers. I hope you guys are enjoying the game so far. It is definitely a challenging little romp through a game that wants to kill you every single time. A Widowmaker's Camp. Oh, it's a, uh... Okay, so it's a outlaw garrison. I wonder how hard that is. You come across a deer skull. At first it means nothing to you, but Jisbert picks it up with earnest. Muted dust pours out of the cavity as he turns it this way and that. Hands trembling, he throws the head out of his hands. It clatters hollow along the ground, tumbling over into where the horns should be. A scared man claims that a soothsayer once told him he would come across a skull such as this. There are many such skulls out here, you argue, but because... Or because things have a tendency to die, your words do nothing for the man as he slowly and nervously shuffles back into marching ranks. So is he, like, permanently damaged now? Jisbert? Oh, wow, he lost 50% of his resolve right there. Recent events have left him afraid for his life. Either he's right and he will meet his end soon, or it'll pass in time. Interesting. I'm thinking you need a big badass helmet, so that's what he's... He's going to wear a household helmet, because it's alliterative. That it makes me happy. You've survived a battle now, so enjoy having a hat. Enjoy having a hat. Uh, the auxiliary shields, my guess is they are nowhere near as good. So fatigue is 10, but you get 15 defense. 15 defense, yeah. So they're just like bad normal shields, basically. Shields that are slightly worse. I'll see you all next time. Thanks for stopping in, everybody. Bye-bye.